Got another question for the transition elements playlist. So this one covers the identification of unknowns, empirical formula, and oxidation numbers. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so make a start. So you can see in test one, they're adding aqueous ammonia dropwise and then in excess. So initially, you're going to get hydroxide precipitate and they've both got sort of a green colour. So we're talking about iron 2 hydroxide and chromium 3 hydroxide. So which one's which boils down to what they do in excess ammonia. So you can see there's no further change with B. So iron 2 hydroxide is the one that doesn't dissolve in excess ammonia, whereas chromium 3 hydroxide does, and it forms this purple solution F. So in terms of formula, D is FeOH twice, E is CrOH three times, and F is this complex ion CrNH36 with a three plus charge. So I'll just do the equations now. So for the production of the hydroxide precipitates, I'm just doing the short versions of the equations. So there they are there. Whereas for the production of F, we need to use the full formula. So crh 63 plus is what's reacting with those six ammonia ligands. And we get a ligand substitution reaction where all six H2Os are replaced by six ammonias. So moving on to test two. So they're starting off by adding nitric acid. So that's a test for carbonate ion. No change for either. So it's not a carbonate. They've then followed up with adding um, barium nitrate. It's a test for a sulfate and we've got a white precipitate which the labeling is G for substance B. So B must be a sulfate and G will be barium sulfate and no change for C so obviously C isn't a sulfate. So there's the equation for the formation of G, the barium sulfate. So we can now identify B fully. So we know it's iron 2 plus and we now know that it's sulfate so it's iron 2 sulfate. Moving on to test 3 now. So again, they're starting off with a nitric acid just to check there's no carbonate ions present, which there aren't. And they're following it up by adding silver nitrate solution, testing for a halide ion essentially. No change for substance B, but we're getting a white precipitate H with substance C. So H is going to be silver chloride. So there's the equation that shows the formation of that. So putting the evidence together now, we know that um, C contains CR3+. We now know it's got chloride ions in it. So therefore C must be chromium 3 chloride. Moving on to part B. So the first thing we want to do is work out the um, ratio of nickel to sulfur to nitrogen. So it's like an empirical formula type calculation. So that's given us a nickel to sulfur to nitrogen ratio of 1 to 4 to 8. So if we go up to the formula that they've given us, you can see there's nickel to sulfur there. So that means X must be 4. So moving on to the value for Y, we need to use the nickel to nitrogen ratio. So we know that that's 1 to 8. We also have just established that X is 4. So 4 of the 8 nitrogens are coming from these SCN minus ions. We were given this two here, so we know there's another two coming from these two ammonium ions. So there are two left, so Y must be two. And moving on to the final part, we've got to determine the oxidation number of nickel in compound J. So there's the formula again. These are just the charges on the species in the brackets. So we've got two ammonium ions, plus one each. Four SCN minus ions and two neutral ammonia ligands. So to keep the whole thing neutral, see there's no overall charge, the nickel has to be in the plus two oxidation state. 